Hey Skyfarers, Arknet Admiral here to bring you another Hobby Showcase video. Hobby Showcase is the series where I take great examples of Cauldron Overlord's hobby work from the Warhammer community and shine a spotlight on it to show it to you, the viewer, because I basically take things that I think are cool and show them to you because I like seeing cool stuff, so I assume you do too. This is just my way of giving a little bit of extra recognition to the great things I've seen going on in the community and also I think a great way to give people uh, a chance to see things they might not have seen before, get some extra ideas for their own armies and take some inspiration and hopefully once I've done enough, enough of these videos become a little bit of a resource for new people starting counter and over or so, you know look through and get some ideas before they start their army. Uh, before we dive straight into this particular hobby showcase a quick reminder Aethercast dice are on pre-order at the moment until the 9th of May, Monday. Uh, so if you want to grab some of those, uh, head to the Ko-Fi shop. Uh, there is a link in the description uh, where you can pre-order those. And uh, if you're watching this in the future and you've missed out on the pre-order, I am ordering a few extra as well. So you might still be able to pick some up. So it's still worth checking. Um, but yeah, if you want to get some cool Aethercast dice, then have a look there. Okay, so let's talk about this particular hobby showcase. Uh, let's bring it up on screen a bit more so you can see it better. So um, first of all, let's tell you a little bit about the uh, the person whose hobby this is. So this is by a guy called uh, Santeri Sarkola. Um, if you're on the Skyport's Discord server, then you might know him as Tan Terry. Um, it's the name he goes by on there. Um, you probably will recognize um, the hobby work as well because he shares quite a few pictures on there. And uh, if you're on Instagram or you want to go check him out on Instagram, then on Instagram he goes by the name Admiral Grudge. And again, the link is in the description. So go check him out, give a bunch of likes to his pictures and stuff, and also give him a follow, because I'm sure there will be more great stuff coming from him in the future. Okay, so why do I want to show you Santeri's work? Well, there's three reasons why I've chosen uh, sanitary stuff to show you today. Uh, the first reason is a little bit of an odd one. It's because I'm a little bit worried about this series. If I keep showing you tons of golden demon standard paintwork or um, crazy conversions, you know, that take cost like eight kits worth of models, you know, to make one model and stuff, that it could actually be a little bit off putting. Um, the you think that, well, I, can't, I could never do that sort of thing. Um, so I want to show you stuff that, you know, I, of course I do want to show, you know, some some of the more crazy stuff or the, you know, the stuff by the really, really top-notch Golden Demon artists. But I also want to show, you know, some stuff that is still obviously really good, but a little bit more achievable for, you know, the more average hobbyists. Because a lot of us, you know, will see some of these things and think, wow, that's amazing and I like seeing it, but I could never do that. So um, that's part of the reason why I want to show this stuff, and that's not to put it down because it is still a beautiful army, and I'd be proud to proud to have this as my own army if I'd done this. Um, so um, it's yeah, it's still an amazing army. But I want I want to show uh, things that are you know achievable for hobbyists as well. So that's one reason. The other reason I want to sh uh, well, one of the other reasons I want to show it. Second reason is because it's a great example of taking an idea and a theme and running with it basically um and i think that's something that a lot of people maybe don't think about doing with their army so i think that's a, uh, a great takeaway for people to to have uh, after viewing this is that well you know i could do a, a little bit of a theme for my force and it's um it's, you know a nice thing to do um so his theme is uh icy mountains and that sort of thing i'll go into it in a little bit more but i want to explain my third reason uh which is the basing work so the basing work is the main thing i'm probably going to be talking about in this video because the basing work is, is amazing so i'll show you that in a minute okay so back to his theme uh the thing that santeria's picked for his army is basically the idea that his admiral admiral halvac uh has taken his crew and his fleet and he is instead of wanting to compete with all the other cauldron overlords in the sky searching for you know the next seam of a for gold uh, where there's lots of competition he's decided to go and do something a little bit different 
he's going he's gone off to some snowy mountains uh that have been abandoned because of the uh, the weather and the conditions there are, are you know awful basically and he thinks well rather than you know competing with all these other cauldron overlords i'll go somewhere where there's no other cauldron overlords and look for treasure and stuff so, you know he's going in search of temples and abandoned holds and towns and that sort of thing you know to look for assets of value that he can then trade and so that's a theme that's carried throughout the army um so it provides two sort of themes one is um the location which is basically somewhere that's really cold um and the other one is you know that they're searching for treasures and stuff which is you know a bit more sort of standard for cauldron overlords so that they might be searching for treasure of course they're always on the on the lookouts for that sort of thing um but it does sort of come into into play with some of his models a bit uh so the first thing before we move on to some some pictures of his stuff because obviously you want to see pictures um one thing i want to call out is one of the cool things about his army here you can see he's done uh a nice little mural on his iron cut there of uh the mountain scenes um which is um a nice way to tie in with his theme it looks cool on the ship of course um and uh it basically almost on its own tells the story of this army which is nice so he's done it on the ironclad he's also done it on the frigates as well uh, which is nice as well um and then while we have got this picture up on screen, I want to just talk a little bit about the colour scheme. So, of course, they are travelling in uh, frosty Arctic areas. So he's obviously mirrored that with the choice of colours. You know, he's got blues and whites and silvers, um, that sort of thing. And then he's provided a nice contrast with it with the yellows, the golds and the, the bronzes, which... Um, almost you know represents the story as well because the blues and the silvers and that sort of thing represent the area the location and the golds and the bronzes and that represent the cauldron overlords coming into that area which is quite nice i think um yeah that's me being a bit arty farty but there we go um i like it <laughs> uh so yeah so he's got a relatively simplistic color scheme but he's executed it really well and one thing that's really nice about the color scheme is he does push it a little bit further um on on occasion um just for accent colors so um because the danger is if you, if you when you pick a color scheme that you stick to it a little bit too much and you know you go well, okay well it's blue and gold and therefore everything is blue and everything is gold where actually what he's done is he's got some like little elements of red in as well so they don't go too far from that two-tone color scheme but, um, you know, it, it just provides a little bit of extra interest on occasion. And then we'll see some examples in the in the future pictures where he's using you know, some teals and some greens and things as well. Just to, you know, add some variation to that two-tone colour scheme, which is nice. Uh, one last thing before we move on to the next picture is I just want to call out some of the cool sort of um, other freehand work he's done with, like, uh, nicks and scratches. You can see there's some down here on the um the hull of the ship just to show where they've been battered by the weather and that sort of thing which is nice okay let's move on to some of his cool pictures now this first picture i want to show you is basically a diorama that uh he's put together for his army and unfortunately this doesn't actually do it justice i don't think because it's a portrait picture and um Santeri, he he's either a professional photographer or you know uh um you know an, an enthusiast in photography um he certainly knows his stuff so he's done this really cool picture but it's portrait and i've had to crop it into a landscape so this doesn't give the picture full justice um but i still wanted to show it to you so this is definitely a picture that you want to go check out on his instagram because you'll see uh you'll see it in its proper glory there uh so as well as having his ships and his crew and stuff in this diorama you can see on the left here he's also got uh like a scenery piece so uh this is uh for for his perspective it's uh a abandoned refinery that the uh the Duarden are exploring the Gaudron overlords are exploring just to see if there's any leftover assets which again refers back to his story and his narrative for his army um 
but uh, you know, it's a really cool scenery piece, and uh, that's actually something that you can buy if you want to get one of those. You can get that from Dark Fantastic Meals. It's called uh, the Zephyr Lords uh, Argent Refinery, I think. Um, I actually have one of these myself, but uh, unlike St. Terry, mine is unpainted, so he's putting me to shame there. Um, some cool things about that, you can see how he's added lots of frost work to it and stuff around here and here, um, which is something he's done on the ships as well. Uh, which, you know, to make it feel like it's been abandoned and been left for a long time. And then he's also got some verdigris and stuff, which, um, again, it's like I mentioned how he includes a little bit of, you know, extra green into, into the armies as well, which is nice. And again, in this bit, you can also see uh, quite nicely the uh, the freehand uh, mountains that's on the side of the ironclad there. Um, if we move on, we just got the, the lower half of the picture, you know, because I had to crop it. So uh, again, you can see um, how he's set up some of the, the crew on the ground, which is a nice sort of idea of the diorama. So you've got a few guys up top, um, you know, exploring within the refinery to look for assets and that and then a few guys down below just to secure with the secure the area make sure the everywhere's everything's safe while the ironclad is sort of landed and stuff like that you can see some little elements down here um where he's included some green on the um on the arcanaut just to break up that color scheme a little bit as well which is nice and then i mentioned that the basing work is one of the main reasons why I want to show this army. So just look at the ironclad base. Um, <laughs> it's amazing. Um, doesn't, I don't think the side angle gives it pro it's uh, sort of proper uh, juice there. So I, I, I've got some better pictures in a minute from uh, different angles. But one thing I do want to call out is uh, this, uh, this section here, uh, which is um, obviously it's flight stand. Well, he's actually, um, rather than using the Games Workshop flight stands, he's built anchors for all of his ships um, and then used them as the flight stands. So it's like the ships have dropped, their, dropped the anchors, um, you know, well, so they're rather than flying, you know, up at high altitude, they come down to the ground and they dropped anchor while they explore somewhere, um, which I think is a nice sort of element. Um, and this particular anchor, his ironclad is called... Uh, frostbite which is nice and he's actually named the anchor as well which is called uh, grungy's tooth and he's got a little bit of narrative that they actually sometimes will use it in battle they just lower it and let it swing through grots and stuff i don't know it's quite nice quite a fun idea um so that's cool uh let's move on to some more pictures so here i have a picture of his whole fleet um his whole, whole army and stuff all sort of organized to show everything so this you can now get a sense of how much he's actually done and how much effort he's put in um so it looks great and you can imagine if this was uh on armies on, on parade or something certainly uh you know it just looks really good um won't uh no i'll move on from this because you can't see much in these pictures so but i wanted to show everything um you know it, all all together but uh, i think the closer pictures show stuff better um so here's a close-up of the ironclad uh you can see how he's uh uh used all the extra uh accessories and get you know like the little cases and the oil can and stuff that i think a lot of people myself included to extent will sometimes sort of leave these off and because it's just easier isn't it but he's um he's used everything available to him and he painted all the extra details which is nice you've got the uh the guy on the side of the ship painting the ship and of course he's but he's probably painting the mountain side actually. But again, you can see all the all the details and stuff on the ship here, which just looks really nice. You know, um, all the extra little uh, scratches and stuff, and you know the the color scheme and how the the helmsman's just got a little beer there for him as well, which is a nice addition. Um, let's move on to some cool things. So uh, first of all, this picture on the left. You might have already noticed this guy in the previous picture, so I didn't mention him because I, I know I had this picture coming up. Um, so it's just uh, basically what he's done is he's used the Sky Warden from Thundrix Profiteers, and he's attached him to the top of the ship, and he's you know protecting the ship, which is a nice touch. Um, and then he's done a call from with all of his Sky Riggers, which is he's masked the flight stand with some cotton, which I've seen lots of other people do as well, but I think this is really a nice fitting way of doing it with, with this army because you know if you've ever 
you know gone outside or when it's cold and then you um you know you breathe out of course you know you can see all you all of your breath um so of course it makes sense that exhaust fumes in a from from an engine in a cold atmosphere would uh, be visible and you know be steamy and smoking you'd be able to see them so i think that's a nice touch there and then also on this left hand picture i want to call out like some of the extra frosting and stuff he's put on the ship um to make it uh, just to tie it in with its environment which is nice and then of course on the right i promised some nicer pictures of the base of the iron cloud so you can see here some of the cool stuff he's done he's got um uh, elements these big shards of ice here um he's made those out of resin that he's dyed which is uh, really cool and then he's also um used scenery pieces and stuff because again if we go back to his narrative they're exploring they're looking for abandoned temples and cities and things to look for treasures so it makes sense that wherever they land the ship there's going to be you know stuff like this um on the ground but uh one of the nice things that i want to call out is not only is he tied all of this sort of stuff in with the color scheme of of his army but he's also um made these statues and stuff feel like they're a part of the environment rather than just plonked onto the base um so you know he's built up the ground sort of around them um there's frost and ice all um over the statue as well and another nice thing that's about his basing work is there's just so much different variation of colors and textures going on so you can see how there's obviously there's um the big ice shards that are called out and there's you know not lots of uh nice uh powdery snow but there's also some nice smooth areas of un unbroken ice as well and then there's elements of like uh cracked ice as well here which is nice and there's you know, variation all the way from navies down here up until uh whites and the light blues and that sort of thing as well and then even just the addition of some little parts and that they're all covered in frost as well which is nice uh let's move on to some other pictures because i've got a lot of pictures to show you he's been very kind and sent me these you know really nice high resolution pictures so i can show you so them so this is uh one of his frigates he's obviously done two frigates but they're they're both very similar so i just i just chose the one i like the, the best to show you um but then on the pictures on the right i've got both bases from what uh, base from one frigate and a base from the other um so you can see down here uh one of the uh anchors he's made for the frigates which is really very really nice I, I mentioned them earlier but um yeah, i think they work really nicely as flight stands and again you can see how the base is all built up and that's one thing that i think if you take anything away from this video for ideas for your own army is go to town on the to, go to town on the bases for your ships because essentially they're blank canvases um you know a lot of like big bases and warhammer they have a big model on top you know there's you know like a more crusher it's a big pie plate base but there's a big more crusher on top whereas the ships you know there's just a little spindly flight stand and then the base is empty so it's like a big blank canvas so go to town on there and fill that because i think it's always a bit of a shame when it's just a flat base with a few tufts on it so i think yeah building it up like this it looks great the the use of uh, more funders profiteers on these bases as well so a nice addition and i just really like the uh the variation and texture on the bases so there's um you, you know he's used um some of the same things he's used on the iron base like the shards of glass and stuff like that uh, not glass um resin sorry as ice um and then you know he's got you know the the powdery snow and that sort of thing but he's used them in a slightly different way here so on on this bottom base they're hanging on the side of like the the rock edge and stuff like that so it's really nice i like the fact there's um just you know little additions of the snow on the thunderous boot and on his head there which is nice and then i mentioned about the the uh variation in tonal color you can even see this little elements of purple in here and then um it goes into greens in some areas as well which is nice so it's nature is varied nature is not monotone so it would be very easy for him to have just painted this blue and then done a dry brush of white on it and it would have looked okay it would have looked fine but by varying all these colors it makes it look a lot more natural and interesting and he could have just left these um shards of ice just you know 
as they are, as they were after he made them, because they would have still looked really good, you know, transparent. So by, by adding like some um, extra highlighting and stuff and white and some bits of uh, frost collecting on them, I think it just adds a little bit of extra depth. And narratively, I like the uh, the idea with the way the um, the crew from the ship have come down to sort of scout the own protector. You can see how, you know, um, in the top one, the two Arconauts are sort of checking in two different directions, which makes sense. They wouldn't just sort of, you know, come down and sit next to each other and then, you know, both look in the same direction. They would sort of check the whole surrounding area. And I like the way that the uh, Thunder in the bottom here, he's sort of headed straight to this sort of raised area so we can get a better view of the surrounding area. And that's what I mean. It just it feels like a natural thing for him to do there, which is nice. Uh, if we move on to one of his gun haulers, uh, you can see on the left there, the, you know, nice close up of the ship. Uh, um, the color scheme is used, which is lovely. And then I'll be honest, I'm mostly going to talk about the basing work because that's the thing that excites me the most with his army. Uh, but the basing for uh, two different gun haulers on the uh, the right here. Uh, so again, you know, he's using similar elements on all of his bases, but use them in different ways. So the uh, shards of ice on the top base there are much more uh, vertical and like, as if they've broken off something or, uh, you know, from a uh, like a, a waterfall that froze and then they snapped off and then the top bits melted or something. But yeah, they're, they're much more like tall, spindly shards on here rather than like, um, rather than the way you used them before. And there's lots more uh, big elements of sort of uh, frost crystals and stuff on here. And you can see, um, which is nice, and then a few more plants and stuff on that one. And then this one on the bottom, I like the fact that there's like a, a piece of statue uh, here that he's put some sort of um, varnish on there as well to make it feel like it's got a layer of ice over it so it sort of got wet at some point and then frozen and that sort of ties into why the plant would be there because obviously there would have been water there at some point you know which would be nice for the plant to grow in so he's obviously thinking about this from a um a realistic point of view so okay well yeah these are where this is an area where it would make sense for a plant to grow and stuff and then go of course if it got wet then this is how it would freeze um that's what I mean. and then again this bottom right hand base is one of the ones that really shows the nice variation in, in colours because, um, you know, if we look at this bottom left hand section here, there's purple, there's teal, there's light blue, and then there's some darker blues and navies there, some more greys, and it's all sort of tied together with the, the white frosting and stuff as well. But then equally with the... Uh, with the statues and the the bits of old temple and stuff, you know, of course, he could have done uh, both these sections the same color if he wanted to, but he's broke by breaking them up. It's a, it's uh, makes it a bit more interesting. So he's got sort of like the gold and then the darker brown. But then he, he also this plant here just ties in with that color scheme a little bit because it's a sort of creamy color, which is nice. Um, and then if we move on to look at some of his heroes, of course, you know. Um, he's built up the bases on his heroes, which I think is a nice thing to do. Um, and of course, try different things out on different models as well, which is nice. Um, so, uh, of course, the flying heroes on the, on the right, uh, Brock Grunson and the uh, Andrew Moss and Drew So, of course, they are also like a blank canvas, you know, you can go to town with them. It doesn't mean you can't do it also on the um, the foot heroes as well, like the navigator. And it's actually quite handy to put. You know, to build up your foot heroes on a larger base as well because then if they're next to a unit on the ground then it's easier to spot which one's the hero and stuff which is nice uh there's a cool element also as well on the brock gunson base where there's like uh he's used a bit from the uh you get a spare mortar with the thunderers so that's sort of half embedded in the rock there and you can see how it's sort of charred the area and stuff i think there's a better picture of that from a different, slightly different angle on his instagram as well which is nice and then you know some nice massive shards of uh, ice there as well which is really cool uh and one other thing i want to just talk about before moving on to some more pictures is um on the end of master of dirigible suit you can see how he just um used some painting effects to uh add a bit of uh like frost element to it so you can see there's like 
this little line of white here and stuff where you can see where like the ice is sort of uh taking effect on the on the engine and sort of spreading around which is quite nice and if we move on we have uh uh his chemist or Bjorgen Fundrick and again I mentioned how he varies the color scheme a little bit so it's not all everything is exactly the same so there's some elements of green here which is nice because it's like a bottle green so if that area is sort of glass and then he's used some more of the darker um more ready bronzes and stuff on the chemist um and then um so yeah he's varying up the color scheme a bit which is nice and then of course one thing to call out here is he has gone to the effort of painting his gauges so always admirals paint your gauges really does you know finish that model off and just push it to the next level if you can do that and then admiral how back on the right there on his massive rock again and the big shards of ice which is a, a really cool looking base um you can imagine him sort of using that as a to you know give a speech to his crew or something you know gear them up for the the next stage of their journey maybe they didn't find uh, any treasure in this particular place but you know they will find some in the next area he probably you can imagine him promising them which is nice uh and then if we move on, we've got his engine master on the left there and uh, Jacob Buckminson as well. So there's a couple of really cool things I want to call out with these models. First of all, the engine master. Um, again, there's, of course, the basing work is, is really nice. And I'm sure he's done these frosts, um, but they're, they're really nice about this sort of crystals. Um, but the main thing I want to call out is this. So we've just done a nice little conversion there uh, to replace the hammerhead. Uh, on the engine master he's just he's used the uh, anchor from a gun hauler um and then this section here i believe is cut off you know one of the spare uh body sections you get for a uh, thunderer because you get an extra one in there so i think that's cut off there this uh, uh ancestral uh dwarden face which is a nice touch and that's just uh, a nice simple example of how you can change and kit bash your models just to personalize them to yourself um so yeah i think that's really lovely um because you know sometimes you can do crazy um and really complex kit bashes but sometimes the simplest ones are the best you know things like head swaps or you know changing a weapon or whatever so I think that's really good. And if you are going to do kit bashes or something, something like this that slightly changes the silhouette of a model is always, always a good thing to do. Um, and then if we move on to uh, Jacob Bugmanson, the really cool thing I want to call call out about him is obviously there's a spilt beer down here, and you can see not only is the beer spilt, but it's actually been spilt just long enough to freeze, um, which is a nice touch because obviously it would, would freeze after a while. Um, uh, yeah, and he, just a uh, really nice paint job on him. He's done the face really well. And I like the way he sort of, you know, uses his own, he's tied Bugmanson in with his own colour scheme as well, because, you know, Bugmanson's meant to be from Barracanar, but it doesn't mean you have to paint him that way. You can paint him to match your colour scheme. So, you know, white beard and stuff makes sense and stuff. So it looks nice. Uh, we move on to some of his troops. So he's done, you know, his Arcanal sort of like a, the blue and gold colour scheme. He's added in some little elements of green um, in a few different areas just to vary the colour scheme a bit, which I think is nice. And of course, again, the basing work is really nice on these guys. And then he varied the, uh, the 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 warm side of the colour scheme by using some dark brown on these guys as well, which is a nice way of just adding a little bit of a different touch. So different units feel slightly different. Um, if we move on to its funders, you can see how. They still have a little bit of element of that dark brown, but not so much. You know, they they feel like a different unit because they've got a generally different colour screen. He's used a lot more. Um, he's painted their carapaces white, um, which is nice um, to make them feel different to the Arconauts. So they, they tie in as a cohesive force. You know, the overall colour scheme is similar, but there's different touches and different types of units, uh, which is just a nice little extra touch in their course. He's varied things up again as well with little elements of red and green in places, which are part of the colour scheme, but um, 
they're more like accent colours without going too far. Because you you know the temptation would have been that he could have done a completely different colour. But um, you know, their their variations on the hues that he's already used, which is nice. And of course, on these guys, um, there's you know some excellent use of the uh the resin ice crystals and stuff as well, which is lovely on their bases. And then we move on to his uh uh sky riggers or sky wardens in this particular case. Um I mentioned earlier about how he's used the um cotton wool on his uh uh the flight stands to mask them, which is nice. And then the, of course uh he's also done some little frosting on some of the balloons and stuff, which is nice. I like the fact they've got varying amounts as well, like depending where they've been. So uh these guys at the back have obviously been caught in some sort of snowstorm, whereas this guy here and this guy, um, they're, they've probably not been out <laughs> about as much. Uh, you know, they've barely been affected by the weather. And then some of the others, have, you know, you can tell they've been out for maybe half an hour. So but they, those guys got caught in a storm, <laughs> which is fun. It's a nice sort of uh, way to just vary things a little bit. And then the basing work, I like the fact that you, on these particular guys, unlike with the Thunderers and the Arconauts, he's just included some of the warmer elements from his colour scheme. So he's got some of the some uh, sort of brownie coloured rocks and some of the uh, a few more plants and things, which is nice. Uh, and then a close up pictures as well, um, so you can just see them a little bit better. Okay, and of course, last but not least, he's also gone to the effort of uh, doing some allies. So, uh, yeah, he's done some cool, nice little gyrocopters as well. Um, one of the things I really like about the gyrocopters is how he's added in and included an element of teal into the colour scheme. Um, the sort of turquoise colour, just uh, vary them a little bit. So uh, they feel like they're part of the case of force, but then they also, um, they've got that slightly different touch to them. Uh, makes them feel like they're, you know, you can imagine that they were allies or something. Um, just makes them a little bit different. So he's, you know, the whole army isn't sort of, if he thinks exactly the same, you know, that's not the way you have to do a cohesive looking army. You can vary things, which is nice. And again, the base work is really nice on these as well, again, because again, flying models, so you've got a blank canvas to work with. So he's done some really nice base work on there. Um, and of course, I mentioned how he varies the colours on the bases and stuff as well. But, you know, the temptation is, you know, you could just put this crackle effect paint on and then just dry brush it and then that would be it. But by building up some areas, adding some of these um, shards of um, ice and stuff and, some, you know, some extra rocks and that just helps a little bit. It's really nice. So, yeah, that's uh, Santeri's Army. I hope you like it. Um, if you do, go check him out on Instagram. Again, a uh, quick reminder, uh, his name on Instagram is Admiral Grudge. There is a link in the description. So you can go check him out, hit like on a bunch of his pictures and uh, follow him as well so you can see his pictures in the future. I hope you enjoy these videos. If you do, then, um, you know, hit like on the video. Hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And last but not least, a quick reminder, again, if you want to get Apricast Dice, uh, they are on pre-order until the 9th of May. Um, so, yeah, the link for those is in the description as well. But that's it. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Uh, oh, one more thing. Uh, if you have suggestions for future Hobby Showcase videos, whether it's your own army or someone else's or just a particular model, then, of course, leave a comment down below as well. But yes, thank you for watching, everyone. Hit like, hit subscribe, and I will see you again soon, Skyfarers. Goodbye.